good afternoon all of you uh, hello vishalini uh, we are so glad and we are so proud to see you and to have you on board and along with vishalini uh, i just take this opportunity to say hello good afternoon and a warm welcome to all the participants who have joined on board with us today uh, students teachers principals so uh, i think it's a very proud moment not only for sipri but also to all the participants because uh, from the uh, students perspective uh, i don't have any hesitation to say that whenever we just happen to read about or to learn about or whenever we get some kind of an education about some kind of great leaders especially in the field of science and technology when we talk about newton or when we talk about edison or when we happen to listen to some other scientist all the time we go with some kind of an imaginary face even in tamil if at all we talk about people are talking about tirukkural so we have never seen tiruvalluvar but we have only seen his photograph but now when we are all living in this world a person with the highest iq in the world five world records certification in computer science at the age of 15 she has been uh, invited by isro director and she has impressed upon the scientists with her knowledge and with her kind of uh, guidance through big data and artificial intelligence in the specific and strategic related projects means uh, for all of us it's a very very golden opportunity so golden vishalini is one kind of a great treasure and for every one of us it's a golden opportunity to see because seeing is believing we have never seen edison we have never seen newton we have never seen even thiruvalluvar we none of us have seen shakespeare but these are all very very uh, very uh, uh, i won't say abnormal exceptionally talented people just beyond our imagination somebody is having all the, for the case i think vishalini is from tamil nadu i think kannadasan people say that uh, he, the kind of knowledge he was having his poetic strength it is unimaginable so for all these things you no know, whenever we come across some kind of uh, an idea or some kind of a learning about unimaginable knowledge base many times the faces are not known to us are not known to us in a closer way but i think this is the first time we come across uh, the kind of a person with a ocean kind of a knowledge base and she is so close to us and anybody can see anybody can talk to her anybody can shake hands uh, just forget about the case of covid regulations otherwise if anybody can go and shake hands with vishalini means i think that is the beauty and that is the great opportunity that all of us are having uh, vishalini you are truly an inspiration to not only to students to all the people those who are living right now along with you because we are so proud to say that we are also living in a era where vishalini is on thank so you so much pleasure. thank you yeah it's our pleasure because that kind of an impact that you have created and we the scientists uh, we can understand what is artificial intelligence what is machine learning because now the mantra across the whole world is ai and ml wherever you go no they immediately ask you so do you know about ai and ml and whenever you submit a project they say do you have any kind of an ai or ml component in that component in that particular proposal so that way this kind of ai and ml related slogans are getting popular and we are trying to understand in our own language and in our own way of understanding whereas you are already there and who is able to really tell us what is what and how to go about and how best these two tools could be utilized for research purpose or to conduct the projects or to even address any kind of a critical challenge in the project i think that is where you need lot of appreciation from the scientific fraternity also for any children yes you are an amazing uh, maybe iconic tall uh, figure for every one of them and they will by looking at you they will get more and more inspiration and they will also try to tell themselves that yeah i have a role model because these days role model uh, is another uh, word buzzword i i should say the moment you ask any small kid you can ask who is your role model no kid in his or in her life 
we say that my father is my role model or my mother is my role model but of course kids are there who will tell that my teacher is my role model but i think now you have created a new platform where in kids can tell that yeah a person of my age called miss vishalini is my role model like that you have created a chance for everyone to celebrate you Thank by way of claiming that you are the role model for them so i think this is a wonderful opportunity i don't want to stand between you and uh, the big crowd who are really willing to and they are waiting to listen to you and therefore without taking much of anybody's time uh, i once again congratulate uh, vishalini uh, even though you have been already celebrated and honored by the prime minister or the president i think for each and uh, for, for you every appreciation really counts because little drops of water only makes the mighty ocean and therefore please accept uh, the congratulations and appreciations from the csar family from the sikri family also so we from central electrochemical research institute we just appreciate you so wholeheartedly and vishalini we really look forward a time when you will really come down to karekudi and just visit our laboratory and if possible in the month of september if at all we are able to conduct the open day wherein uh, the, the lab will be open for general public and uh, anybody and everybody can step in this campus and they can see the all the scientific findings as well as the demonstration so at that time if you can make your presence i think i can uh, make a kind of a small show uh, for you alone and we will give you a stage where you can be a crowd puller and you will be a, a source of inspiration to uh, the people around car in and around karekudi because i am asking you this help as in a selfish manner because i want this side of people or this locality people to see you and to get inspired uh, by looking at you so if possible you will make it to happen this year or otherwise also we won't leave you maybe next year at least we will chase and we will just definitely get you sometimes in karekudi and at that time we will make it as a big function with all other students also definitely so this time Oh uh, sure, sure. Thanks, thanks. So with this kind of a uh, one-line request, I wish you all the very best, and I wish Vishalini should be the line of inspiration for many other students also. Students who those who are there on the board, please don't ever think that only Vishalini can reach that height, and we are all definitely below Vishalini. No, it is not like that. One day Vishalini was also lying like every one of us. she was also lying uh, in the same platform in which we are lying today but she has made it as a point that she will definitely reach greater height an unimaginable height and she has now demonstrated and therefore my dear good friends students please take this as a lesson that today we are in one particular platform and the next platform is a height of challenge so with this kind of a target being fixed to you I thank uh, the opportunity given uh, to me by Jigyasa. Once again, my sincere thanks and appreciations to my entire Sikri family, especially the Jigyasa and the Skill Development Program crew. And Vishalini, over to you. I wish to listen to your talk and uh, thank you all, all the students and teachers, for your uh, wonderful presence and gracing this occasion. Thank you, one and all. Sir, you have to unmute yourself. Angapan sir. Uh, thank you, madam. Thank you for your questions, letters, and as you pointed out by uh, every congratulations to feather to her. So thank you uh, for nice uh, presidents, letters, and uh, uh, congratulate to her. Uh, thank you, madam. Now the over to guest uh, Miss K Vishalini with your time. Please, madam. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, is my presentation visible there? Yes, yeah, it's visible and full okay. full screen mode also. Okay, you can proceed. Yeah, but I get an echo of my own voice. Uh, I will find out and remove from that too. Uh, don't worry. You can proceed, madam. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, 
Good afternoon, everybody. I am K Visalini, five world records holder from Tamil Nadu. I feel really happy to meet you all today, and my sincere thanks to Director Secretary. Uh, thank you so much for every single prize you had done within a few minutes for me. Uh, it feels uh, like, as you said, as a fraternity. Uh, you know, like people who are who are currently working on this domain. and who have experience and still I'll, i'm little i'm really a small kid compared to everyone uh, like you uh, hearing praises from you is uh, really making me happy thank you so much for your words yeah today now let's go for the talk break the barriers create new history life the period of time between the time of birth and the time of departure from this world is so beautiful every single moment and every single event that has been recorded in a very beautiful fashion by nature makes us a human being after all and in this life we are supposed to meet a lot of people and these kind of people can be categorized into three categories so easily number 1 those who accept anything that happens to them either positive or negative just as it is they do not work upon any single step to change what that has happened to them whatever happens to them you know like uh, they call it fate they call it destiny they call it uh, lack of opportunities they name it different things whatever that happens to them they simply accept it or just complain about it they do not take any action to change it that is category 1 category 2 is those who convert positive into negative anything positive that happens to them will be converted into negative by their activities we really have to be careful with these kind of negative people and these two kind of people can be easily identified by a single uh, remark that is they always keep on complaining about whatever that happens to them so when you see if you stand on a place and keep complaining about what that has happened to you instead of working out a solution to get out of the negativity that's not what you call yourself as a human being itself Uh, i really uh, would like to say we need to keep away from such kind of people those who convert positivity into negativity or either those who accept anything that happens to them and number 3 is the most important one that is people who convert negativity into positivity we have to associate uh, with people like this third category whatever negativity or what you call challenges in those people's point of view whatever that has been posed by life to them they strive forward to convert that challenge into a positive outcome and i read a beautiful quote in a book uh, recently it says every single person in this planet can light up a room and a few people light up a room once they enter the room and a few light up the room when they exit the room really a uh, thought me uh, breaking uh, quote you know we, if you uh, just say hi or just associate with someone and if you uh, keep on hearing a load and load of complaint from them would you keep on talking to them would you just continue uh, or let them uh, spill all their negativity into your brain no we will find some kind of excuse to let out of them and that's why i say every single person has a ability to light up the room but we have to be in the third category changing the negativity into positivity as well as light up a room when we enter inside the room a familiar face thomas alva edison we all know the story when he was in school his teacher had wrote a letter to his mother stating that this child is unfit to pursue education in any school not only our school his mother especially took that negative moment into a challenge and converted it into a totally 
positive outcome. Today, no kid can finish his schooling without studying about Edison or his accomplishments, the inventions and the thousands of patents he holds. That's unimaginable. That is an example of an achievement because they changed negativity into positivity. Michael Phelps is an uh, Olympic swimmer from United States of America. But we do not know an uh, important uh, problem that he faced, that is ADHD, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. In simple words, it means that he cannot concentrate in a small task for a, a little bit of time even. He used to have the hyperactive disorder. And for him to swim for just five minutes in the pool, his coach has to make him sit down in meditation for more than four hours. For just five minutes, he has to sit down for four hours in meditation. And uh, he, overcome, he overcame all these uh, disabilities. And further, when he participated in the Olympics, the then president, uh, Barack Obama, came forward to the stadium in order to cheer him. That was really amazing, you know. And today, he is the only person on the planet who holds 23 gold medals in individual category in swimming. He created history. He just did not overcome whatever negativity that came to him, but he created history. Someone else in the world can break this record of 23 Olympic gold medals. But he was the one who created this. That is important. A familiar Indian face, right? We would have uh, seen this person in 2008 Beijing Olympics, Mr. Abhinav Bendra, who brought India the first gold medal in individual category ever in Olympic history in rifle shooting. But do we also know that he had vision disorder? For any person to excel in this particular game, rifle shooting, their main power is their eyesight. But this guy had issues in his sight itself. But he never let this disorder win over him. And remember that blissful day when he won gold for us in a, we all would have felt immense pleasure and pride in our hearts when Abhinav Bendra bowed his head down to receive that gold medal and our national flag soaring high in the arena along with the national anthem playing in the background. That is an example of converting negativity into positivity. Do you know this baby? Uh, when she was born, the doctors diagnosed that she would be dumb for life, that she could not speak ever in her life. But today, she holds five world records and 13 international certifications. That's none other than me. Uh, and if you are wondering what international certifications are, the, these are uh, international uh, certifications or technological examinations conducted by MNCs like Cisco, Microsoft, Oracle, and etc. And people after their BTEC or MTEC used to take up these specialization courses. But I began to pursue these uh, certifications when I was 10 years old. And I broke the records of two Pakistani students who held the past world records at my 10 years of age. And one Sunday, my father received a phone call from the Prime Minister's office stating that the Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi ji, wants to meet your daughter. We were just amazed by that. And when I, after the proper protocols, when I met the Prime Minister, I said, uh, I greeted him in Tamil stating Vanakkam. And he again replied to me with Vanakkam, you know, like uh, his pronunciation of Vanakkam that day to me in response was really beautiful, even compared to a native Tamil speaker. I was really happy about that. And when we were talking, he said, uh, Ms. Alani, all that you have achieved in this young age is a great service to our country, India. 
I'm really humbled to say that I was just 15 years old that time. And uh, during that uh, uh, meeting, uh, we were all assembled there and the Prime Minister was walking into the hall uh, to talk to me. At that time, my mother spilled happy tears. Uh, that is because that was the day the Indian Prime Minister was arriving into a hall to talk to that child that was declared dumb for life. And uh, this is me with uh, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, sir. I met him twice, uh, once in my uh, three years of age and again uh, when I was uh, 14 years old. Both the time, he had only one advice for me. It was that, uh, Vizalini, I'm elated to hear your achievements so far, but always ensure that you keep contributing to our Indian country. And I'm keeping up his work till now and this is uh, an important event in my whole life it was when the director of Indian Space Research Organization ISRO uh, invited me to deliver a technical lecture to about 2000 plus scientists of ISRO when I was just 15 years old and this is me in their campus this picture is really precious to me. You see, I'm standing on the dais occupying the ISRO podium and delivering a technical lecture to their scientists. My lecture received huge applause and standing ovation from the scientists as well as the Mangalyam satellite sent to Mars by ISRO. Uh, you can see the satellite here in this picture. Uh, you can also find the image of the very same satellite printed in the back side of the 2000 rupee Indian currency note. But I'm humbled to hold the privilege of having this satellite in the showcase of our home. Further, from my 10 years of age, I had been invited as the chief guest and keynote speaker for about 13 international conferences. If you guys are wondering what this is, international conferences are held by MNCs or higher ranking universities. Even among those conferences, I have been to top tier ones with limited and selected audience, where people need to reserve their seats by paying a fee of about rupees 25,000 plus to just attend my lecture. Well, I was not sitting as one among the audience in those places. I was standing out on the dais delivering technical keynote lectures as a chief guest. Here, people or delegates from about 1000 plus countries used to arrive to uh, discuss new development and technological breakthroughs in their domains together. So you can expect people of about 40 plus age uh, but I was the only little girl present out there, not as an audience, but as the chief guest, as the speaker. And I would be pampered like a princess by all of them. And this is a picture of me delivering a keynote address at Google's Global Conference. And this is uh, me delivering a keynote lecture to, uh, to a gathering of about uh, 1,000 plus engineers in Kuwait. You can see me standing in the left corner. And I met a very special person there. Who is the world's first humanoid robot? It's Sophia. Sophia was developed by Hanson Robotics in Hong Kong. And she is the world's first robot to hold citizenship. She is the Saudi Arabian citizen. And this is me having a panel discussion with Sophia on artificial intelligence. And during the discussion, Sophia said, Ms. Alini, you know, uh, I'm a product of artificial intelligence. I'm born out of artificial intelligence. And you hold the world's highest intelligence quotient. So I would like to join hands with you for developing positive and advantageous technologies for the future of humankind. 
I was really feeling happy and humbled with those words uh, by a robot. Now coming back to people. There is one advice we all need to uh, you, we all need to implement in our whole life. That is, we should not miss any opportunity. We should use it well. But at any case, we should never misuse the opportunity. And if we do not get an opportunity, we are destined to create an opportunity. If opportunity doesn't knock, then build a door. Then what is the door of your life? Confidence. Confidence is not just as per the dictionary definition, the antonym of skepticism, the antonym of fear. It is an innate gun, gut feel. It comes from the trust within, the trust you have about yourself within yourself. And it depends on the perspective of self. What do you think about yourself builds your confidence? You know, I, I have a really interesting story from a folk tale that says what confidence is. Once upon a time, there was a king who held a competition in his whole country. He did not have a heir to the throne, so he wanted to uh, choose the next heir through a competition. He announced that whomsoever is capable of pushing their enormous palace gates with bare hands shall be the next heir to the throne. But in case if someone attempts it and fails to open the door with bare hands, then both of their arms will be cut off. People were excited with the first announcement, but the second condition was scary. Everyone backed off with the fear that they might lose their hands if they failed. But one man came forward and the king asked him, what if you lose your hands if you fail before he attempted? He said, yes, if I fail, I might lose my hands, but I will be alive. I can just uh, work out the solution to come out of that disability. But if I win, I'll be the next king. I will get a whole new kingdom to rule. That's confidence. And when he attempted, he pushed open the door perfectly. That is because the one, he was confident. And number two, the palace gates were not locked. They were just, uh, they were just standing on, on the locked position, but they were not locked. The king had that uh, clue with it, but he did not say it publicly. He wanted to find a confident king for their kingdom. And this confidence is the difference between successful and unsuccessful people. Successful people keep going. They make mistakes but they never quit. But you need to uh, be careful in one point, that is the right dosage of confidence. When the dosage increases, confidence becomes overconfidence, and that is the ill fate. I agree. We all need to face failure in our, our uh, life. Some point or some event in due to some circumstance, we will face failure. Nobody on the planet is bereft of failure. And I also agree that failure gives pain. But there are two types of pain. One that hurts you and another that changes you. But have you imagined a life without pain itself? There is something on the planet that's Marcelli syndrome or congenital insensitivity to pain. There was a person named Marcelli who had this issue and it was named after her. Marcelli used to say that pain is precious. You know, for us, if we hit somewhere and uh, blood starts to come from our uh, arm or some uh, out of our skin, first we respond to the pain and then only we notice, okay, there is blood oozing out of the skin. But for Marcelli, it's upside down. She, can, she doesn't feel pain throughout, the, throughout her whole body. And uh, only if she spots some blood oozing out of her skin, then only she can even understand that she had uh, hurt herself. And that's why she says, pain, uh, pain is precious. And she also advises us, 
we should all learn to endure and handle pain that is where we lack not about feeling pain or the intensity of pain we are lacking to learn to endure and handle pain you can see we also know an egg has a shell what happens when the shell is broken from the outside life ends the embryo inside dies but when the very same shell is broken by an inside force life begins now tell me what's capable of stopping you obstacles can't stop you problems can't stop you other people their comments that cannot stop you what that can stop you is you yourself it is always easy to recuperate from failure as i said earlier life forces us all with an equal amount of joy and challenges it's okay to fail it's okay to cry but it's never okay to sink like a rock in water after every failure an adventure awaits you ahead wipe off your tears wash your face and cheer yourself up and go forward face the failure enjoy the difficulties and feel the difference there are lots of examples from the nature we could find to understand how to recuperate from failure a seed is sown into the soil that soil we know but if you see from the seed's point of view a seed is put inside darkness and it's being buried inside the soil it needs to fight itself up it needs to advocate itself it needs to work for itself there is nobody to help it but it needs to work hard to plunder the soil above it and rise as a large tree it's a lifelong work for the seed to even if it becomes a large tree to soar high and a butterfly a butterfly needs to lock itself up all by itself into the pupa stage in order to get a wing to fly high so always feel composed and calm on whatever situation you are at any part of your life this this kind of peace and failure handling and mental calmness is what today's children or teenagers lack that's something we all need to develop each person is unique just as the director madam right now said each person is unique don't let anyone judge you don't don't let anyone give you negative feedback negative attitude so don't let any one any third person judge you but every product needs honest reviews for it to be optimized in the future therefore be your own analytical critic performing wise comparisons and always compare your today with your past but never compare your today with someone else middle version everyone is evolving so is you so is me so is everybody else this life is a complete evolution and therefore perform wise comparisons and let me tell you there is nothing impossible in this world on the one time people were saying that the only impossible thing in the world is to come out of mother's womb and get back inside again even that is ruled out today lily boomer she is that great kid who that uh, who ruled out this uh, thing lily boomer is the daughter of margaret boomer uh, when lily was inside her mother's womb the doctors found that there was a tumor sticking to her tail bone and sucking all the blood from the fetus and after a point of time it became like the uh, size of the tumor became larger than the fetus itself and it required the, uh, and the doctors were required to remove the tumor in order to save the baby dr darrell cap a fetal surgery expert came forward to face this challenge and when margaret was 26 weeks and 5 days pregnant a surgery was planned a critical surgery which had only 20 minutes of time and within that time the doctors had to cut open margaret's uh, abdomen take Hello. the baby and the tumor out take the baby and the tumor out and later uh, remove the tumor from the baby put the baby back inside and for the seal the abdomen of the mother 
everything had only 20 minutes time as the baby was not fully developed to breathe in the regular environment like us because it was only 26 weeks old later the surgery became a successful one and lily was put back inside 12 weeks after the surgery lily was taken out again through cesarean and that that's why she is said she was born twice so guys even today the techie world has making all those impossible stuff into easily possible ones a quick questions to the students what is the difference between learning and studying these are the two words that we all use in our daily life especially the student fraternity what is the difference between learning and studying anybody of course there is a problem you can proceed madam yeah right. so it comes to the simple answer what is used in learning and studying do we learn to ride a bicycle or do we study to ride a bicycle do we study for our exam or do we learn for our exam the answer is simple we learn to ride a bicycle and we study for the exam that is because when we learn something we understand each and everything what we do and we learn it it, it stays with us even if we are not looking back into it for any many years but if we study something it's a temporary phenomena it may be forgotten after a point of time that is why the technology artificial intelligence is called machine learning not machine study there may be lots of explanations for the term artificial intelligence but i have a simple definition that is when a dev becomes a brahma that means when a developer becomes a creator it involves the machines mimicking cognitive functions that humans associate with the human mind inside a machine it involves two operations one is learning and problem solving learning is classified into three categories supervised learning unsupervised learning and reinforcement learning in supervised learning the machine is taught each and every step to solve all kinds of inputs and how to proceed towards an output in unsupervised learning we give the input as well as what we expect from the machine Uh, as the input itself then it finds whatever step it can find uh, uh, after trials and errors that is called unsupervised mode and learns the proper route to reach the goal but reinforcement learning is kind of a combination of both supervised and unsupervised learning where in every step that the machine figures out and in a unsupervised fashion we start to give us positive or negative reinforcement by evaluating every step and helping it to lead towards the goal i'm just giving a vague overview and there are four different types of ai reactive ai theory of mind ai limited memory ai and self aware ai reactive ai is the first circle of artificial intelligence machines that literally literally go by the term carpedian which means make use of the best at the current moment machines and systems based on this type of ai neither have a concept of the past historic data and inferences from it nor the ability to conceive a future such machines work on the present a scenario or task that is right in front of them a simple example is a calculator if you give a calculation as an input it works on to find the output of the given input alone it does not go back to find some something or learn something from the past and apply it again here theory of mind ai it is more on the books and science fiction movies here we talk about uh, artificial intelligence and uh, uh, advanced systems that can perceive the concepts of emotions and people and change its behavior accordingly they can recognize face and eye movements even and modify their acts accordingly 
limited memory AI. The memory of such systems is short-lived. Short Here, the systems can go back to a past for a short time and learn something from it and come back here to work it out. This concept is beautifully incorporated in self-driving cars where the sensors detect the instances of pedestrians crossing the road, bad road conditions, bad weather, or a nearby incoming vehicle. But after a point of time, it becomes an outdated memory. Self-aware AI. This type of AI has the potential for real-world application. Uh, Self-aware AI is an extension of theory of mind class where uh, machines or robots are aware of who they are, understand their internal traits, states and conditions. This is the basic building block of AI. First, at the bottom level, we have the AI infrastructure and algorithms. So here in infrastructure, we incorporate the hardware, the architectures required for building an artificially intelligent system as well as the algorithm. The set of instructions to go from step one to the last one towards the goal. And above that, we have AI platforms and services like Google's TensorFlow, PyTorch, uh, IBM Watson, and etc. Microsoft Azure, etc. So these platforms and services stand above the infrastructure and help us build everything towards the goal. But we need not build everything from the scratch. They have the uh, required packages as we can build only our uh, application alone. And above that, we have the data, the steps to process, and the action. So the data here depends upon what our application is. For machine vision application, we have images or videos as input as data. Example, detecting faces and objects in a video or an image. For speech recognition, the uh, input has to be audio file, where we are transforming the spoken words in the voice to text. And for natural language processing, that is about uh, detecting the intake in a text-based command, example, the chatbots. Here we have the list of text as the data. And next we go for the processing. Information processing, reasoning by analogy to related concepts. For example, you are uh, conversing with a chatbot and it needs to give you a proper answer to what you are asking to it. So that is about reasoning by analogy to related concepts. That is processing of the information given to it. Next is learning from the data it has already. Learning to drive a car from the recorded, pre-recorded driving data set. Planning and exploring agents are almost uh, uh, inspired from nature, especially a dog, a pet dog. If you bring a pet dog to your home or a new environment, after a little bit of being shy about the environment, it comes out, it uh, roams around the place, it explores where it can get food, where it can uh, sit down or lie down, where it can sleep, what are the places it should not go, or uh, different kinds of scenarios. It learns all of them and it keeps on uh, updating itself about the environment. So that's about the planning or exploring agents. Image recognition. It's about modifying the uh, image generation of it. Uh, it is about modifying the faces in a picture. Uh, example, deep face. Speech generation is about providing uh, speech or voice to the virtual assistant. Or simply, it can be told like uh, converting text to speech in a particular voice. Handling and control is about the pick and place robots uh, picking up novel items, different items that they have not encountered at all. How it can grab, how it can lift the item and put it in the place where it needs to go. And navigation is always about autonomous vehicles, how they avoid obstacles, how they go in a particular road and everything. This is the basic building block of AI. So what do you just get hit by this image? We all go to our uh, kindergarten uh, stories where a crow comes, a thirsty crow comes and finds water in a jar and it is in a very low level. Uh, it puts some pebbles inside and the water lifts up the crow drink on a sunny day. This story, we can never forget at all. 
it is because we understood what happened we didn't we never saw such kind of uh, video or we never i mean people of my age where there were no animation graphics we never saw a crow really doing such things we never saw an animated video but we created a visual inside ourselves and we did not require any graphic designer uh, user interface designer or even an animation expert for imagining what happened in order to understand and this is how we are trying to incorporate this feature of the human brain into a machine and we call it artificial intelligence learning and understanding and today the dumb deaf and blind system is called as an intelligent system an artificially intelligent system but let me just say you robots today are not highly capable last we perceive them to be in science fiction movies but there is immense scope and as director madam said uh, it is like artificial intelligence is everywhere it is like water and soil whatever domain you can just post people are just talking about how to incorporate ai into that field but there are also lot of complainers who say ai is taking away the jobs no ai might take away jobs but it creates new jobs that never existed why are you just keeping on looking at those jobs that existed in the past this world it keeps on evolve uh, keeps on evolutionizing everything and that way ai has bigger potential ai powered assistants are there everywhere today you know siri and alexa are highly patient and responsible household managers in many homes today they do not shout at us like our parents do and we are conscientiously truthful to them but yeah what's wrong in alexa knowing where the hell did i keep my wallet and siri knowing what's my bank account number in my phone notes i have not asked anything from cortana so far to estimate her ability as a data witch however Google Assistant so far has not asked for my locker password. Anyway, six years ago, I was in my first year of bachelor's, technically fifteen years old, when most top tier companies were battling against each other in developing the best AI assistant. I did not have access to Alexa or Siri at that time, but I was dumbstruck when I found a new thingy on my phone named Google Assistant. popping up after an update of 3 hours eating up my data pack that enigmatic ai program showed me suggestions on where i could go on a next trip depending on my travel history deriving the data from my past phone location i started to dig deep into google assistant then the first thing i did was to keep my location turned off 24 hours 7 i was feeling insecure like there was some invisible eyes watching over me all the time i was concerned of something called privacy and everything later when i got to know about what's lying behind the uh, the uh, ai powered assistants then i befriended the interesting evil and now with google assistant is my ally in reminding me the days of my associate staff at well and it has a lot of features today it's about like another friend another non living friend along with this all the time like a shadow and alexa knows more stuff about my projects than i could remember but have you wondered what lies behind the voice of ai with that sheer curiosity i dived into ai in linguistics and google punched me back with another sheer spectacle of creativity called poem portraits google's poem portraits here you are supposed to give only one word as a trigger to the application while it gets you a poem that keeps on extending until you can exhaust staring at your screen i wanted to test it with a hard input i gave a trigger as phosphorescence phosphorescence is the word that means to the natural phenomena of emission of light without any perceptible heat and this is the first stanza of the whole poem itself it says a uh, In the silence of the flames, the night of the stars, your warrior heart wanders across that sea whose light shines on my soul. The flash of the first hills are cold as your little brook. You see, 
this is full of metaphors well i keep eyeing at the enjambment how the words flow and how the prepositions are placed and everything and that time i received an automatically generated report stating that this poem the whole one which kept on flowing till the bottom of the screen that was never exhaust uh it said it is an ai generated poem based on a 19th century poetry style with little bit more research i came to know that genetic adversarial networks or gan is the technology that lies behind it and gan is what that hooks me up today gan or gen generative adversarial networks or genetic adversarial networks was developed by ian wood fellow from the university of montreal Facebook AI research director Yang Lekhan mentioned that YAM is the most interesting idea in the last 10 years of machine learning. In simple words, given a training set, this technology learns to generate new data from the same statistics as the training set. For example, a GAN trained on photographs can generate new photographs that look at least superficially authentic to the human observers, having many realistic characteristics. and the same technique can be applied on any distribution of data like images music speech prose writing anything quite free whatever it can be you see this picture is called christie's portrait and this one was the world first artwork that was generated by ai and it was auctioned to a price of 432000 us dollars this is how ai this uh, gan functions we have a generator that takes random numbers or the noise vector the generator works then returns some sets of fake images this generated image is fed to the discriminator network alongside a stream of images taken from the actual real image data set the discriminator takes both real and fake images and returns for probabilities between 0 and 1 with one representing prediction of authenticity and zero representing fake and here we have a double feedback loop the discriminator is in a feedback loop with the ground truth of the images which we know and uh, the generator is also in the feedback loop along with the discriminator and finally we get a predicted label applications of ai as in uh, applications of yam is in all domains a uh, simple example so our text to image generation as you can look below in this image uh, if you could describe a uh, a scenery or anything it can fetch you an image it can generate you an image in a particular uh, resolution which looks exactly as your explanation this small bird has an yellow crown and a white belly see in 64 cross 64 pixel size as well as in 128 cross 128 pixel size a blue bird has so this bird has a blue crown with white throat and brown secondary the second row and this bird has red head throat and chest with a white belly everything is incorporated perfectly and if you are wondering if this thing has been googled or what not at all these forms are generated by the artificial intelligence uh, system in real time in live input and output scenario this is image to image translation for example if you could give a scenery in winter it can generate a summer scenario of the whole scenery itself see the, if you could look deep into this image you can see the uh, electric post as well as the lines of uh, power cables are not even left out in the summer translation everything is incorporated increasing an image resolution just as the birds input 64 cross 64 to 128 cross 128 or any other example and predicting a next video frame this is incorporated in many of the video games uh especially uh, when it is involving lots of users in live scenario uh, that time we need to predict every video frame automatically and we need to generate them in live scenario and also it's used in editing podcast to assist people so let me ask you is this good or bad a lot of people will say it's bad because uh, i have 
have met so many people who chastise AI as a job snatcher. They do not seem to look deep into it. The breakthrough of any technology will definitely take away something that existed before it. And that's why it's called a breakthrough, an invention. Example, the invention of wheel took away the job of palaquin bearers. There is nobody carrying someone else on their head again. Wheels do that. And the inventions of computer revolutionized back ledgers. Can you see anybody writing down your transaction, your account number and details on a long, big, thick ledger or a register today in Japan? Everything has become UPI. Everything is automated. When mundane jobs are taken away, we got to see that it opens new gates that never existed before. And all we can do is utilize it, encourage and contribute instead of admonishing artificial intelligence as code. And about the ability of AI, the development is how we can uh, figure it out. This kind of technologies are not harmful to the humankind. It's just demonstrating what human beings can do. And AI today is kind of a toddler. It, once upon a time, it was a baby and it's now a toddler. And it's having a lot of scope in the future to become a teenager and mature into an adult. But anyway, we have to keep in mind that we humans have the control. Humans are not in the control of AI unless we get addicted to it. But we have the control over the technology. Instead of just seeing how the system can automatically function and imagining how it could become a threat to humankind, thanks to all the science fiction movies having similar kind of ideas, we have to look from the point of view of demonstrators, the people who work in AI, and join hands with them in understanding what AI has the potential in reality. And technology is always a mirror. What is present in front of, what is displayed to it is what it displays to us. What is present is what is displayed to it. And therefore, as I said, we need data for a machine, an artificial intelligence machine, to figure out what it needs to do. When the data is proper, its activities will definitely be proper. But instead, if it happens uh, due to a mishap, then the blame is never on the AI machine. It has to be on the developer one. And therefore, the goodness of AI outweighs the bad. Let's always enlighten, encourage, and contribute to the development of this new technological breakthrough, having it under our control. Therefore, kids, aim high, think big, and achieve more. As I said uh, in the first stance, it's Opportunity. Opportunity is everything. Never miss your opportunities. Use all your opportunities to the fullest of yourself. Never misuse an opportunity. And life, in case, doesn't give you an opportunity. You are supposed to create an opportunity, not just for yourself, but for everyone around. Let's break the barriers and create new history. This is my website, www.kvisalini.com, which I developed at my 10 years of age. And this is my company, Vika Innovations. And this is my email. You can note it down, info at kvisalini.com. In case if you want any kind of technological advice or you want to learn anything on AI, you, have, you can feel free to contact me on my email ID. Just mention that you had attended this event so that I can connect to you. It was and thank you. Thank you Vishalini. Uh, actually thank this year wonder, wonderful uh, talk uh, especially for the technically uh, motivated as well as the, your life is also a motivated a uh, few questions from the uh, participants uh, so uh, please uh, answer those questions uh, participants, uh, participants please raise your uh, questions you can mute yourself and ask the questions jayendra ghosh in the line 
ஜெயந்த கோஷ் ஆர் சங்கரகோமதி சங்கரகோமதி பிளீஸ் ஆஸ்க் யுவர் கொஸ்டின்ஸ் yeah wonderful uh, speech at this one and we have learnt a lot of things as a base level uh, am i audible yes yes audible audible you can proceed we have uh, this one wonderfully explained shalini and uh, as a student level we learnt everything wow the a has been uh, improved in, with respect to ir revolution industry revolution 4.0 and uh, Uh, basically people are using neural network also and a also and deep learning also and hope so this machine learning a and deep learning are tremendously increasing could you please explain uh, the difference between ai machine learning and deep learning okay the difference between ai machine learning and deep learning is right Uh, you can just say in simple terms ai and machine learning are indifferent they are both same and deep learning is a subset of machine learning machine learning means everything uh, everything uh, when you compare when you say you are training your uh, machine to perform something on uh, on all by itself but coming to machine uh, coming to uh, deep learning uh, it is about uh, the as you said the uh, corner the cns or convolution neural network or neural network which we used to implement so the neural networks are simply a mimic of the uh, human brain neural network itself into a system level and in deep learning we have as the name suggests some kind of deeper algorithm which can handle lots of data as well as different kind of uh, algorithms that are smarter when compared to uh, the rest in a larger data set uh, and you can say like for machine learning the, for the intelligent behavior it requires a considerable knowledge a prerequisite but in uh, deep learning it can learn by itself so easily compared to the machine learning algorithm and whatever you say deep learning is always a subset of machine learning it's not something out of the world there are lots of swayam courses npl courses uh, about deep learning and today people are not uh, teaching you what machine learning is as a special course because today we have uh, we are just focusing the students to start, learn about what the uh, best technology is not the old ones that's what that's the simple difference when you are going to deal with a large data set and you want a very specific output or application we go for deep learning anyway deep learning is a subset of machine learning you can google about this uh, for uh, better uh, and even clearer examples thank you madam yeah yeah very well understood one more question please yeah. from my part yeah yeah Proceed. actually uh, people are uh, uh, nowadays uh, this course has been introduced by mhrd recently isn't it okay. uh, for the college students for the past 3 uh, years so and uh, people are very afraid to set up a lab and related functions actually uh, people understand that a cloud server is necessary and the students are studying their uh, java or python course uh, basically what kind of a language is exactly needed for artificial intelligence as well as database retrieval because ai and database is a integrated course for the yeah. college level students and in that what kind of a laboratory facility or software we have to concentrate on Are you or a purchase in on college if i can ask pardon who is student in college who is student in any college or uh... Yeah, I am a student in a college. Actually, okay. faculty. Currently okay. working as a faculty. For my student, I am asking. Okay, then uh, nice to talk to you, madam. Uh, about the uh, artificial intelligence infrastructure that you need today, a uh, lots of arch architectures are available through the cloud source systems that you said, and it always depends on your requirement on 
what kind of application your kids are going to develop or what you are going to develop uh, because uh, there are specialized architectures available specialized infrastructure specialized softwares and the service available from where you can derive your required part as i explained you know in the uh, basic uh, building blocks of ai uh, like that you can figure out whatever uh, infrastructure you want for just for your application alone there lies you no know, overall all in one architecture available it always depends on what your application is and about the language required to be learned i would first suggest python python is really mandatory and now there are lots of languages available that can uh, like that can be applied on ai and r programming for data science r go and all Likewise, there are lots of languages uh, that are specialized languages that give you different packages that are already present with them or supported open source by different developers across the world uh, that can assist you towards that particular application alone. So, uh, for example, you need lots of TensorFlow uh, um, TensorFlow libraries can be helpful in your image processing and all. Likewise, uh, different libraries are required for different purposes, and in that way, uh, there is no specific one. And if you are uh, wanting to do something regarding this, wanting to uh, establish an infrastructure for uh, a specific application, uh, please connect to me through my email ID so that we can discuss what your requirement is, and then uh, we can figure out what you need in reality. Or in case if you are wanting to try something out, if you want to explore, then uh, Google Collaboratory is uh, ultimately efficient because even I used to uh, use Google Collaboratory for testing out the algorithms or my slight changes that I'm uh, trying on my projects. And in case if I'm outside like that, but establishing yeah. your own laboratory is a great thing. Yeah, I have a for this idea itself. Yeah, hope, hopefully I can connect with you for more detail. But uh, with the cloud server alone, uh, ju just now I'm working on that AI. But you have given some other day, some consolidated data. It is really helpful. And the Scala software also we have now. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Sir. Your name, madam? I'm Gomati, Chennai, Adi Engineering College. Okay. Professor of Thank College. You. Okay, okay. Nice Thank you. Yeah. Uh, nice uh, interactions. Thank you, madam, um, for your voice. It was a wonderful interaction. Um, Jane Dagos is there? He's on the line? Yes. Good afternoon. Yeah, uh, you can ask your questions. Uh, my question is uh, in the multiplayer game like uh, Ludo, when there is no friend to play with us, uh, computers are playing with us. Means there is an option that uh, computers are playing with us. So, how the AI is used in game development? My main question. Okay. AI in game development is an integral part, but uh, I have not worked on projects that involve game development. Uh, but uh, as per as much as I have learned, I could say. Uh, Especially the GAN, you know, uh, genetic adversarial network, they are used in developing. As you said in Ludo, you need to go to a next video frame. You need to know what uh, the, the board looks like in the next frame after you move a coin or the system moves a coin. That time you need to develop a screen or generate a screen or the board in real time because every time you play, the system plays. It will be a different board. It will be a different coin arrangement, and that is where GAN can be applied. But apart from that, uh, the system would have been already trained on the set of rules about the game. For example, in chess, you know there are lots of rules. Likewise, every game has a rule. Uh, so the system will be already trained on the rules, as well as it would be having uh, a learning a pre-learned database. Of the sets of steps that a person might move. For example, uh, if you move coin A, then your next movement you will try this only. This will be in the data set. 
So that system will be already pre-trained in the data already. That's why it can uh, give you a tough move. Depending on the easy, hard or level of difficulty, what you have chosen. And game development in the sense is totally a different domain. Uh, so you can uh, find uh, lots of details about it in Google. You know, I have not, uh, uh, my area is about uh, artificial intelligence into image processing, into image uh, development and uh, as well as on assistive technologies. I work towards fraud, especially with hardware when compared to games. That's why I suggest you explore more on this. Thank you. Uh, Jain, of course, you can uh, satisfied with this answer. I think so. Next, Raman answer. Ramanathan. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah, uh, please ask your question. Sir. Uh, yes, sir. I would like to ask one question. Yes. Uh, the goal of artificial intelligence is to create intelligent machine that can mimic human behavior. So is it possible to create an intelligent machine expressing all the human behavior, such as love, affection, sentiments, emotion, similar to human beings? This is my one question, first question. Okay. Another one question I would like to ask. Uh, artificial satellites are used for to detect well in advance to predict heavy rainfall, cyclone, etc. Like that, uh, there is no such uh, uh, instrument or device to measure some natural calamities, disasters such as earthquakes or tsunamis. We are not having any instrument or device to measure well in advance, to predict earlier. So is it possible for artificial intelligence machine to create such a machine to deduct this type of uh, Calamities well in advance. Is it possible in future? Okay. So answering your first question, in my presentation itself, I have mentioned about. I think someone has to move uh, the audio. Yes, sir. Um, Mute your mic, sir, because I'm getting lots of echo. Yeah. Uh, as I mentioned in my uh, presentation, it's... Yamanathan, sir, please uh, yes. mute your mic. Yes, madam. Yeah. As I mentioned in the first, uh, uh, first in my presentation itself, for your first question, it's about theory of mind AI. Yeah. It's more in, uh, uh, more involved in the science fiction movies or science fiction books or human imagination so far. A machine that can uh, interpret the human emotion is already there. You know, like uh, recognition of uh, the face and uh, uh, explicit uh, emotions can be felt. But when you say a machine that can mimic your human emotion, like if you are affectionate to someone, how a machine can be affectionate to you? That kind of thing has not yet evolved. It is still in process. Um, but detection is already there. Emotion detection is already there from images, from live video, everything is there. But a machine doing all the emotions, ex expressing all the emotions like a human being has not yet been evolved yet. But I expect lots of prospects for that to come in the future, but in the past future. And about your uh, second question, the artificial, the artificial intelligence satellites that can predict uh, calamities in well in advance, right? About that, first of all, nature is uh, totally unpredictable. We have lots of data. We have past history of weather records, climatic conditions for all the geolocation. But still, even with human interpretation, there can be some mistakes. At that time, you cannot uh, expect a completely 
AI based machine to give you a hundred percent absolutely right answer about a natural calamity. Because natural calamities are some things that that is a catastrophe which cannot be stopped unless it does by itself. And uh, about the AI, I have one perspective. I always want AI. I mean, I as a person, as Vitalini, as a perspective, that AI should always be kept within a limit. It should not be applied into each and everything. You know, uh, there are people who are uh, developing projects. I come upon a few people who are developing projects like. Uh, there is a big laboratory for researchers, for example. Uh, people come in and come out. Uh, they used to sit in, uh, work for a project and come out. And uh, they have a chair. They can occupy any chair. And depending on their past records, their own uh, cooling system above their head will function according to their uh, past history of temperature records. You see, we humans need some space to be ourselves. AI should not be incorporated in such kind of uh, unwanted uh, applications. Likewise, AI-based satellite is really interesting, but I still doubt if